Hey guys, in this video I'll be showing you guys my workflow when it comes to creating a character for games. But I'd like to preface that this video won't be me sculpting. So if you do wanna see me sculpt or see my workflow when I'm sculpting, then please comment down below and let me know. But to get started, what I normally do is to do the sculpting so here I'm using ZBrush but you don't have to be using ZBrush and it doesn't have to be a character it can be anything really whether that's weapons you know objects anything and yeah you don't have to be using ZBrush also you can use Blender, Maya or any other 3D softwares but for this video, I'll be using this character that I made previously inside ZBrush. And so I do the sculpting. I would then go inside Blender and import the high poly. So I'll just go into import and then FBX or OBJ. I'm going to use this as a reference for doing the retopology and so I've already done it here but a technique that I use to do the retopology is by using the snapping tool and so to do that you go up here you select this option and then on the snap to just select face and then project individual elements now if you turn this on yeah, I'm just gonna merge this to just get one vertex and now if I move this vertex around you can see that it's snapping on the surface of the high poly model and so I use this in combination with shrink wrap modifier and what this allows you to do is even if the vertex is outside the mesh if you use a shrink wrap modifier it's gonna wrap this vertex onto the mesh and so to use the shrink wrap modifier all you need to do is just change the target with the high poly version so if you click this option and then click on your object you can see that the target is now changed to this mesh and there's different options that you can change if you want the snapping mode to be on surface or above surface normally I just leave it as on surface so if you look at this you can see that even when the vertex is outside the mesh it still snaps onto the mask and this is really useful for things like horns or any tube like shaped object so let me show you an example here what I would do to do the retopology for this part is just by getting a circle and then just changing the vertices to say 8 or 12 and in this case I'm just gonna use 8 but what this allows me to do is just extrude this so if I go to edit mode and then start extruding to match the shape of the horn it doesn't need to be perfectly on top of the Horn because the shrink wrap modifier is gonna automatically snap the vertices so here I'm just getting the shape of the horn and then I'm just gonna do that for now so if I use the shrink wrap modifier and then change the target to the horn you see how everything is snapping onto the surface of this high poly so that's really useful for things like that 
but yeah so you're gonna have to do this for all the different parts of your model now once I finish the retopology what I would then do is start UV unwrapping and marking seams so you can see here I've marked all the necessary seams in order for me to get a nice wrap or unwrap and you can see on here on the UV map that it's wrap unwrapped nicely and so for unwrapping typically what I do is just create a new image and then for example just call it UV map and then you can just change the resolution to whatever you like so I'm just gonna leave it as 1k for now and then you want to make sure on the generated type that you choose UV grid and what this allows you to do is view the texture as a grid and this helps a lot with um, with you unwrapping especially when you want to spot the stretching so here for example if I change the material to the UV map you can see how this object now has the texture of this UV grid and to view it you just press Z and then under material view you should be able to see the grid as long as you've assigned the texture map onto the material of the object so what this allows you to do is for example if I move these vertex around you see how this part of the texture is being stretched so you're able to spot these stretches much easier if you had these UV grid on and you could also see it here on the UV map how this part is being stretched so this is really useful for figuring out where to add seams Okay, so once I've finished the uh, unwrapping, what I would then do is start unpacking the UVs. And there is one add on that I am using to pack the UVs for me rather than doing it manually, because if you were to do it manually, it would take too long but what this add-on basically does is so for example i'm just gonna add a cube hold on so i'm just gonna quickly add a cube and then just start extruding parts or actually i'll just unwrap this cube then I'll add another cube so I'll add three or two more cubes okay now if I select all the objects and unwrap it um, for this in particular I'm just gonna separate this and then unwrap so I have one separate island and so you can see how the UV, the texture map, is not optimized in terms of spacing. You see how it has a lot of missing spaces with the UV grid. You don't want this. You want to make sure that you optimize the UVs so that it maximizes the space with the UVs. 
and so when you get into baking and texturing you're going to have a higher quality texture or a bake so one add-on that I'm using to pack it automatically is you called UV pack master 2 and this saves me a lot of time when it comes to packing because if I were to do it manually I'd have to you know scale different UVs scale it down move things around you rotate it and that's not really useful so rather than me moving the islands manually I'm gonna use this add-on and so this add-on has really nice options that allows me to control how I want to pack it but typically what I do is oh and also this add-on isn't free so you're gonna have to buy it if you wanna use it for commissions or any commercial use not really sure if there is a free version I'd have to check but anyway so the options that I normally use with this add-on for un unpacking so typically the options that I use for this add-on is very specific it's always the same unless I change a few things around but most of the time I'm using the same set of options and those options are the following so if you go under advanced options and then just check the normalized islands now under lock overlapping I normally just choose the exact option and what this allows you to do is if say for example you have a cube and then it's mirrored to the other side for example let me just change the origin and then change the axes so now if I apply the mirror both of these objects should have overlapping UVs since it's mirrored so what this option allows you to do the exact option is it keeps these two UVs packed together so that it doesn't separate when I unpack it or pack it and so now if I select this and then click on exact now under pixel margin I normally change this to 3 and then the adjust time to 5 you can change it to however long you want but for me 5 works the best and then under heuristic I normally just enable this option and if there aren't many islands or UVs I would click on this so that it packs the UVs better but for the sake of this example I'm just gonna choose this option now under non-square packing I normally just use the texture ratio to pack it and then depending on the length of the UV I would either turn this on or off so if it was for example a cylinder let's say and then just unwrap this quickly so let's just say I would change this manually for now but let's just say it was this long Obviously to save space you don't really want it to be sitting horizontally rather you could just rotate this by 40 degrees so that it slants and you can scale it much better so if I turn this option on and change the step value to say 45 it's gonna set this angle to 45 automatically when I pack it so I don't even have to rotate it and I can just set this to 45 and see how this changes to 45 
and if I were to pack it this would then rotate by 45 degrees automatically so here now that's all the options that I normally change I don't really play with any other options so once I have changed all the options that I normally do I would then start packing it and it's gonna take five seconds to pack and then because I've got the heuristic turned on it's gonna keep looking for alternatives for better alternatives when packing the UVs but I'll just stop the packing and you see how this cylinder has rotated by 40 degrees and everything is packed nicely so I use that as the add-on for packing and now I'll show you an example of how a character would look with um, this packing you see how everything is fitting nicely with each other now if I were to do this manually this would take me forever and you could do that if you really want to and that is what I did before I found out about this add-on but honestly this is such a lifesaver like I recommend you guys getting this if you were to uh, take you know 3d modeling seriously but anyway once I pack all the UVs I would then go ahead and make sure that the naming conventions of each object corresponds with the high poly version and so what I mean is if you look at this hold on let me just add a new window change this to outliner and then turn on the high poly so if I were to compare the retopo version with the high poly version you can see how each mesh has the same naming convention so here you can see that the arm guard this would be the prefix and then the suffix would be the underscore high so you can see that this prefix is the same as this prefix for the low poly version now this is really useful when you have multiple objects and you want to bake it because when we uh, start baking I'll show you once I go inside substance but once we start baking you are able to bake each mesh separately and this makes it much easier for calculating the boundary boxes on each mesh for baking so you just want to make sure that the low poly and high poly have the same naming convention now once I finish naming all the meshes correctly what I would then do is make sure that the scaling of the object for both the low poly and the high poly is the correct size and so typically for a standard character the unit would be around two units tall so in terms of height and so this is the basic unit for male characters two units tall and so what I do to uh, correctly measure it is just by adding a cube and then you see how one of this box 
and what I would do to measure the unit is by adding a cube and so if I move this up to match with the grid so one one big box so this big box here that would be one unit so from here so from here to here that would be one unit and then from here to here that would be another unit so two units in total so a cube is two units all and this is what I use as a reference for measuring the height of characters because since this is the generic unit used for games I would then size my character accordingly with this measurement so say if I were to make a smaller character I'd just scale it down slightly from this box now this character I didn't scale but I would do this before before baking it and another thing that you need to do and make sure to do is once you've scaled down your model or you've scaled it up you're going to need to apply the rotation and scale so to do this just select your model and then press ctrl a to then rotate or to then apply the rotation and scale and what this allows you to do is just reset the rotation and scale values back down to its default so you can see how if I scale this these values change but if I were to apply the rotation and scale it would just reset the scale to 1 or not reset but apply a 1 scale 1 to 1 ratio scale and this is gonna fix any issues when importing into your game engine so for example unity but once I've properly scaled everything and made sure that the name the naming conventions are correct I would then start exporting each or the low poly and the high poly separately so I would just select the entire model and one thing is the meshes don't have to be joined together and what I mean by that is you don't have to join everything together because if you were to bake this you won't have the option to bake the different parts separately and that's why you see how all the objects are all separate but anyway I would just go ahead and select all the objects and here I'm just going to export as FBX and then I would just name it as whatever you like to be honest so here I just name it as shaman underscore low just so that it's gonna make it easier for me to uh, find where this file is gonna be and then just do the same with the high poly and if you're wondering how I have the export here in my quick favorites it's very easy to do that so what you need to do is just go into your file and then just right click the export and since I have it already in my quick favorites it's just gonna come up with remove but so for example here I'll just add it to my quick favorite and then to access the quick favorites you would just need to press Q and you can see how this option is now inside my quick favorite tool and so you can do this with any buttons really so it's really useful for navigating around blender and using different tools and modifiers 
Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention is you want to make sure that you have everything smoothed. So right now, when you finish the retopology, it's going to have a flat shade to it. And you don't want this when baking, so what you want to do is just click your object and then shade smooth. And if you want to, you can add or mark sharp onto your object so that, for example, let me just select these edges. And if I were to mark sharp, you see how nothing happens. But if you go under this tab and then under normals, enable auto smooth and change the angle to 90, you see how this part is sharp. Uh, you could do this if you want to but for the sake of this video I'll just leave it as this but once everything is smooth both the low poly and the high poly needs to be smooth so once they are smooth you can export them and once I've exported them I can then go inside substance and select the low poly version and in this case I'll just choose this and you can see the low poly version now to start baking what I would then do is go under the material that I want to bake. So for example, if I want to bake the main material that includes all the UVs, I would go to this material, select it, and then under texture set settings, I would then bake mesh maps. Now here, you want to just bake one map at a time just so that if you do end up getting errors you are able to fix it because sometimes baking can take a long time so you don't want to keep rebaking and waiting a long time for it so it's safer to just select one map first and then bake it now for the output size you can choose whatever you like Normally for the characters that I use it normally 1k, 2k or 4k but it really depends on the character and the quality that you want for the textures so for, the ex for this example I'll just choose 1k and the options that I normally change is or add is here it says high definition meshes this is where you import your high poly mesh to bake onto your low poly so I would just select this for example and then here so anti-aliasing what this allows you to do is have smoother edges when you are baking the different maps and I normally like to change this to 4x4 four four or 2x2 two two. and if you wanted to because sometimes you, you're you gonna have to fix some artifacts with your bake you could include a cage file and what this is is it's basically a duplicate of your low poly mesh but it's inflated so that it provides as a boundary to your low poly and control this controls the rays that hit the high poly but I won't really go into detail in this video for this option so I have this set to 4x4 and then here where it says match you want to make sure that you change this to by mesh name if you have multiple objects or meshes 
with your object and in this case I do so I'm just going to change this to by mesh name and here you see how it says low poly mesh suffix low and remember inside blender I changed the mesh with the suffix low now this is what this is for and what this is saying is it's gonna bake each mesh by the corresponding name so for example this mask is gonna be baked with the high poly version of the mask and that's pretty much it for the options and then you would just go ahead and bake the selected texture in this case I'm just gonna choose the material one since I don't want to be baking the feathers so I'll just select this option if you want to bake the materials separately so I'm just gonna go ahead and start the bake now this might take a while depending on your computer but you can see how everything has been baked onto the low poly now, if I press Ctrl Z and undo, you can see the difference. But I would then just keep rotating the model around to see if there's any artifacts that I need to fix. But if there isn't, I would then go ahead and bake the rest. And if you want to select all the options, you just press Alt and click. And then just unselect the normal. Then go ahead and bake it. So this is going to go ahead and bake the rest of the maps. Now, I don't really use substance for baking that much though because I recently uh, got Marmoset and that is much more useful for me for baking but it pretty much does the same thing with some extra features that helps me fix artifacts much easier but for the case of this video I'll just stick to substance now I'll just wait for this to finish baking Now once I finish baking, I would then go ahead and start texturing. And like I said, I won't really go into detail with the softwares that I use. I'll just briefly go over the workflow that I do within those softwares. So like I was saying, I would then start texturing. And normally I'd just add fill layers and different masking however recently I've also started using 3d coat for uh, texturing mainly hand painted textures and so once I finish texturing I would just go ahead and export all the textures and re-import into Blender So one good way of importing textures is if you go under the materials tab and then just select the material that you want to import the textures to under shading what you can do if you have this node wrangler add-on turned on is so for the add-on it's called node wrangler so you just go under edit preferences and then add-ons just type in node it should show up as node wrangler just turn that on what this allows you to do is if you for example just So I'm quickly going to delete this and have a fresh new principal BSDF. So if you were to click on the principal BSDF and press Ctrl Shift T, 
what you can do is you can select the textures that you want to import so for example I'm just gonna select all this and it's gonna automatically um, assign the textures with the correct options as you can see now once I finish importing the textures what I then do is begin the rigging process and uh, uh, you could either do this before your texture or after your texture but with my workflow I prefer to do it after a texture and if you want to learn or know more about how I rig I made a video previously so you can go check that out if you want to see what I do but yeah once I finish the rigging I would then export that as an FBX with the armature and then import it into unity for example and just check with the materials and check the scaling and if there's any issues with it I would then just come back to blender and try solve the problem there but yeah that's pretty much it for making game ready characters and hopefully you learned something and if you have any more questions just please let me know in the comment section and I'll try my best to answer them